Now, many famous writers have called Gloucestershire their home. Laurie Lee, Dennis Potter, John Moore, just to name a few. How familiar are you with the name Leonard Clark? He was a prolific author and poet who was brought up in Cinderford and was greatly influenced by the Forest of Dean in his work. He is one of the writers being celebrated in a new project and BBC Radio Gloucestershire's Joe Durrant has been discovering more about him. The busy Bellevue Road in Cinderford. More than 100 years ago, this is where Leonard Clark grew up. I'm just actually next to his house at the moment. We've got some flowers in the garden beyond the wall there. It would have been a very different picture with horses and carts trundling up the road and a view of the collieries. This is St Stephen's Church and it's somewhere that Leonard Clark was very familiar with. He was a chorister here, he worshipped here and ultimately it's his final resting place. Roger Deeks is with me and Roger is a research associate at the University of Gloucestershire. He's in charge of Reading the Forest which works in partnership with the Foresters Forest Project. He was born in the Channel Islands. His mother was a governess in London. She'd uh, become pregnant outside of marriage, which in 1905 in the Edwardian era carried a lot of stigma. She wanted a future for the child, and we believe that she was promised support by Leonard's father. So what she did, she contacted an old friend, somebody called Sarah George, who lived here on Bellevue Road, who'd also, as a lot of forest women had at that time, uh, been in service in London. And she asked if... Sarah could take uh, Leonard and look after him. So he came apparently as a baby in a, in a small cot, six months old, to Newnham Station. And he grew up in Cinderford, a town that he really came to love. When he was uh, celebrated by the town, they called him their adopted son. He actually taught in the school here. And this was the big, big influence over his life and his poetry. Tell us about some of the, the, the work that he, he created, because he was prolific, wasn't he? Yeah, he was, and he, his early influence was uh, F.W. Harvey. If you read uh, the books he wrote, he wrote two biographical books later in his life called Fall in the Forest and Greenwood. They're really lovely books. All the chapters are little stories in themselves about growing up, and he describes in one of those stories meeting F.W. Harvey, the, uh, the poet. And Harvey introduced him to how to write poems, gave him some early tuition, and in fact wrote the foreword to his first book of poems. It was published in 1922, a very small volume. He wrote poems that were published in newspapers. He didn't have another publication until almost the Second World War. That was because he was pursuing his career as a teacher. F.W. Harvey was his best man when he was ma married in this church, St Stephen's. And he started writing about other poets. And he also, very importantly, started to produce anthologies. These were books of other people's poems that he thought children would appreciate. By then he was a school inspector and he was really very influential in how people taught poetry in school. He believed that, that poetry for children should be very simple and very accessible. He had a view that children would be interested in natural history, so he produced lots of poems and anthologies which were, again, based on his childhood experience about the woods, about the flora and fauna that you find in the countryside. He was the, one of the longest serving school inspectors. He was friends with all the great poets of that era, John Betjeman, and then later on Ted Hughes. In fact, he was awarded an OBE for the, for the work he'd done in terms of children's literature. So he was very acclaimed. Later on, he wrote a poem, which was, he wrote a, a book of, a volume of poems called uh, Intimate Landscape. It really is a, a look back on the area, you know, the history, the heritage of the forest, the people. But it's a very personal, deeply personal uh, work about the forest and, and, his, and his experience of it. I've come to the Railway Inn in Newnham on Severn to meet David Price. Uh, David's the landlord here and David is a big fan of Leonard Clark. Oh, I was about 18. Right in the top of the Christmas stocking was uh, A Food in the Forest by Leonard Clark, which... I think I read a couple of chapters, uh, chapters straight away. <laughs> I couldn't put it down then. Yeah. He had a fantastic love of the Forest of Dean and he liked all simple things and he, he really appreciated simple things, the simplest things in life, which were free, like the, the fantastic views and the trees and the people, the characters of Sinderford. He, and he wrote about, about them in the most eloquent way. The, there's a view from Sinderford, which is... Uh, one of the best views in the whole country, which 
people just drive by and take for granted. But Leonard Clark, he saw that view and he wrote about it, he appreciated it and he wrote about it in an eloquent way. You know, if you go to the top of Sinderford, you, you look out over the River Severn and the Cotswold Hills, and then you've got the whole city of Gloucester and you can see the cathedral. Then if you turn around the 180 degrees and look the other way, you've got the fantastic woodland of the Forest of Dean. The Welsh Mountains, he's a very underrated poet. He, he, he deserves a lot more recognition, especially for the town of Sinderford. Poor old Sinderford gets a lot of stick, but it's, it is a, in a lovely setting and Leonard Clark appreciated it and wrote about it. What a fascinating man. Part two next week on the show about Leonard Clark. You can see some photographs on our Facebook page, facebook.com slash BBC Gloucestershire. The area um, that he grew up in and was influenced by, that's facebook.com slash BBC Gloucestershire.